What's going on guys? Today we're just gonna dive right in. So I've been having some video issues with both of my RDQs, the one that we just built and the one that I've already had pre-assembled. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna look at some of the things and components that make up obviously the video system and we're gonna change things out, kind of switch some parts around and just kind of dive in and just really look at things all together to figure out what's really going on. So without further ado, let's go ahead and just get this thing started. Okay, so my RDQ here has exploded onto the table. A couple reasons here. I'm go I was going in and I was fixing this XT60 connector that got really damaged, uh, let's say, the other day in a crash. Um, and I was also trying to do a test. Now, I've been having some issues with the video on the my first RDQ here. Let's call this RDQ Smurfin. So what I'm doing, though, is I'm going to uh, take the RDQ that we have built and kind of cannibalize it here for a second. I'm going to switch the cameras on them uh, to see if the that weird uh, imaging pr problem that I was having moves with the camera. And if it moves with the camera, then I know it's my camera, um, and then I need to do something with it. But what I was when I was going in and replacing my XT60 connector here, I found something, and I kind of want to shed some light on this. So what happened is. This little processor right down here, let me see if I can get in view. This one right here, and this is right underneath the power cable that goes input power there. This one right here, I believe, could have been possibly, maybe, touching my USB for my flight controller. Now, I don't know about you guys, but to me, that sounds kind of like a problem, or it would create some problems. Um, after I tightened my stack down, it was kind of squished in between there. So my solution was, is I rotated it, um, another one of the processors was, or I don't know what these things are called, give me, give me some help here you guys, what are these little black chips called? I would love to know. They were touching my USB in a couple different directions and so I ended up putting it in this orientation which I'm sure this is exactly how you're supposed to orient it. None of the things on the bottom were touching anything from my flight controller. So. I still want to move my camera, but I think that could have been a big contributing factor to my shitty video. So let's go ahead and I'm going to, I just wanted to tell you guys about that because you definitely want to make sure that when you do a stack, and if you have a stack as tight as mine, like this is very thin, it, it has one nut here and uh, like some a dampening pad here, so it's not much at all. I had to put the dampening pad in there to give it some extra room because my bolts are not that long. They only go up to about there, which I should probably get some longer bolts, and I recommend trying to get as long of bolts as you can when you're building a stack or a pod-style quadcopter because these pods are really prone to just getting snapped off. I had one where I did the nylon standoffs. Nylon standoffs are a no-go on pod-style quadcopters. Now, if you already knew that, sweet. If not, the more you know. So, I'm going to go through now and I'm going to switch these cameras, and I think that's, and actually there's something, uh, an issue with this one, and I think we're going to go over that in this video. So we will go ahead and solve the issue that's wrong with this quadcopter as well. I'm also having some video issues on this one. Uh, the other day when I was flying, it was flying just perfectly fine until some of my motor screws came unscrewed and my motor was flapping around like nothing. Um, after a couple crashes, uh, that's probably just from crashes, um, after a couple crashes, I was getting some very bad, uh, uh, what do you call it, banding. Very bad banding whenever I would hit the throttle. Like I almost had to float through when I was racing. Um, I would have to, I would only give it throttle on the straightaways when I know I wasn't going to hit anything and then I would literally have to float through the rest of the track because the banding was so bad. So we're going to go ahead and troubleshoot this one as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, make sure all my solder joints for my VTX and everything is good. I might, um, I'm actually going to be changing the antenna the antenna to my to just uh, another antenna that I had lying around my fat shark goggle antennas um, I don't ever use them because I have my diversity receiver with the uh, helicoil antennas so I don't really ever use this so I'm gonna just give this a go and see if it works because it's a good antenna I might epoxy this closed here so it doesn't get broken off we're gonna try that on the VTX make sure that's all good 
and uh, I'm actually also going to do and take go and take my uh, my multimeter and power this quadcopter on, but I'm going to touch the VTX power outputs. Uh, let's see there, I think they're right here. The VTX power outputs, I'm going to touch those with my multimeter and make sure it's only getting 12 volts because if something's going wrong there and I'm getting full direct power, then that means the regulator on my PDB went out and, uh, and or the LC filter could be having something wrong with it. So we're gonna go ahead and troubleshoot that today as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this one back together while I take this one apart with the camera switched over and while we have this one disassembled, we'll go ahead and troubleshoot it. together ready to give a test flight and see if the video is fixed on this one on to the next do a continuity test make sure we're not shorted All right, let's go ahead and get her button back up. I think I found my issue. <laughs> that, I believe, is a problem because this looks like it was soldered to it. Maybe that was just soldered down. I don't know. I'm gonna change out the VTX and the cam and the antenna. And I think we're gonna have golden video from here on out. <laughs> so let me go ahead and grab my other VTX and we'll go ahead and do that too. You what I was talking about. So do you see how this is soldered on right there? Oh, and look what I'm noticing on this one. This is missing a little capacitor. There. So I'm gonna take it off of this one. <laughs> Is it just solder point one, solder point two? Let's give it a try. Right, I'm gonna slap this one back on there. way out there. 
but it's ready. <laughs> All right, so we're ready for a test trial on this one and the RDQ Smurfin. So I guess if you see these guys next video, well not next video because I've got oh yeah, if you guys see if you guys see these quads in the next video, then you know it didn't work. So we're gonna go ahead and give those quads a test fly. I'm gonna see if I have any video issues uh, still, and if I do, I'm gonna go ahead and record that with my DVR and see if I can't get you guys to see it as well. Um, you can definitely gather from today's video that you want to check things out whenever you're going in to replace one thing. Even though you may only have one problem, like my XT60 connector was broken, I had a couple other things going on that I wanted to look more into. Um, and definitely if you're trying to build a very tight stack, you want to make sure that nothing is touching from stack to stack. You want to make sure you have a really good separation in between both of them because that can definitely cause problems. Um, so I, that's why we went ahead and fixed that one today. And you know, issues can always be as simple, not always, but sometimes just be as simple as changing your antenna. So hopefully that's what was really wrong with my, uh, the other RD, with the RDQ that we built, but we did go ahead and find that VTX issue as well. So hopefully that whole thing just kind of solves the issue and I have great video from here on out. So I want to thank you guys for joining in today and really watching the video. It really helps out. Leave any comments on if you have any questions on anything that I'm doing or if you have any tips uh, or answers to questions that I've been asking throughout the video. Uh, I definitely don't know everything and I'm not trying to say that I do know everything, but I'm always looking to learn more about this hobby that we all love. So I want to thank you again. Like, share, subscribe, comment. Thanks for joining you guys. Mm -hmm.